nya 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 okay right we're ready okay so i'm just gonna try and really you know i really want to feel this man okay hansel rescue al watson take one yeah 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 Pretty sweet in here. Now we're monetized, people can just go and fuck off. So this, I haven't done this yet, and I haven't done that yet. The big bit. Yeah, because we had like a massive disaster. What? Yeah, well, the fucking bucket rotted. Bucket. I don't think it rotted. I think it split. Oh. And basically, so this is now, well, hence the smell in here. That's like the best part of 12 litres of fucking paraffin that's just soaked in. <laughs> I was pissed off. And look, not, on, not only that, look at all the grease that's in it. Oh, so, no. It, yeah. Well... Nightmare. But you see, the problem is you can't start trying to clean it up. So I've just had to let it fucking dry. But I mean, it's, yeah. Well, the dirty shed was looking a bit clean, wasn't it? Mm. So, so um, it, it, it's on brand now. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. So, um, yeah. So we've got some kind of choices to make, basically. Okay, okay. So this is, all, this is all these bits. I mean, I've actually cleaned a lot of the flashings on them as well, where the castings were. So I've cleaned up some more elements of that, um, kind of, yeah, so that th th all of those components pretty much are ready to go, they've all been wire brushed, but I'm kind of like thinking, okay, so essentially what we're probably going to need to do is, we've got that, it was quite a rough casting actually, when you get down to it, there's all sorts of casting crap in here, which I've essentially kind of cut out. Um, and so we can see that at some point this has been that kind of, that green, that dark green, I almost think it's the same as, you know, when we were discussing the Parkinson's vice, and the Parkinson's vice is this crimson colour, and it seems like green was another popular colour back then. So I don't know, we haven't, we haven't got any traces on here, but I think what we need to do is we need to get a litre of diesel now to do that part, and then really we have to decide what we're going to do. The idea was that this is really probably, it might get used and whatever else, but the fact of the matter is realistically it's probably an ornament. So I think we need to stop it rusting so we don't have to go through that horrible bloody process again of cleaning all this up. That's the point I make. Whenever you see these, these films that are on YouTube of these kind of types of drill, um, which, you know, they're called post drills or they're called blacksmith drills or self-advancing drills, whatever you want to call them. It seems like post drill is a relatively modern term, according to John at uh, Black Bear Forge. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't want it to look like it was, it, you know, it's something you could go out and buy in a shop. I don't ever like that. I think it ruins these things. When you see them painted up with that kind of, that modern green hammerite, they just don't look right to me. We have now got our brass rod. So, so in theory we can make the two handles. It needs two handles really. I don't, I'm, that wooden one's a bit knackered. The problem is, I don't think we'll ever get that color to match. It's like that color up there. If, you, if we took this to the shop, because it's the same green as this, but that doesn't even look green, does it? So dark. And you can see this, it's like pastel coloured. You need to make a decision then, don't you? Well, I think it's made itself. I think what we're going to do is we're going to just go and get two cans of matte lacquer, um, some diesel, and we'll clean this up. 
We'll get them everything degreased and then we're just going to spray it up with lacquer. Um, we've mounted the post on the wall, so that's where it's going to live. Uh, You're not doing anything to that then? Uh, no, I'm not going to make. I just think, what what's the point of, I mean it is absolutely saturated with oil, so I don't think there's any point doing anything to it, I think just leave it as is. There's not a lot to see here, we're just degreasing really. Yeah, it's coming off. Oh look, there is some green coming through. Well, you know what? I don't think I am going to wire brush this. I think we'll kind of try and keep that original paint on there. You got some paint coming through, have you? Yeah, can you see the green? Oh, okay. Yeah, just a little bit. So is that enough <coughs> brass to make two handles? Yeah. You got an idea for how you're going to do that? You're happy with that? Yeah. Eey, fuck. I mean, that's still as dirty as shit, isn't it? I mean, it's it's working. It's just it takes so long to bit that grease gets so hard. See, it's just caked in it, isn't it? I think it's going to have to get wire brushed. That problem with that is that is that all that finish is just coming off. But then there's no other way, is there? Well, I don't think there is really because I mean the thing is is that you can't even really where we're at at the moment with this is you can't even touch it. Yeah, it needs to because be because it's like you can't you can't interact with it as anything because every time you touch it you just literally but that's what you're doing though isn't it yeah you're not restoring it so it's gleaming in new you're restoring it so people can go oh yeah and you can does. have a go without getting yourself caked in shit but yeah. I mean, you know it's just like you know i mean it's, it's to be expected it's probably been in some barn or something for however many years and it's just absolutely shitted up But you see it's not, can you see how dry it is under there? So you see that the diesel isn't getting, isn't getting under anything. I think it's just going to have to be wire brushed mate. But we don't need to show that. So I'm over here at the lathe currently. That isn't a sensible way to machine this. What we're going to need to do, that is the handle. machining but I'm just gonna hope but it's not an ideal machining situation this because there's too much I'd like to but I can't drill into the end of that because this is already hanging off there so once I've got a bit in there so I'm just gonna have to see what happens and go very steady but I don't know if this is gonna work
Okay, this is an active center. So basically what it does is it just stops this from flexing when you're machining. So, can we lock that off? There's no threads in there, but that to me is a bit small. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to build a little shank on it. Basically that's what we've got to mount our handle on, but it's a bit kind of small. So we're going to widen that up first. That'll do, that'll be enough, won't it? Right, bosh, that's all. Listen to the noise it's making. Got a little wobble on, that might account for our point one. Just clean that out. Okay, so that's 8.5. Now the good bit, Uncle Mark. Make sure you film this. Okay, so that goes like that. So what are these called then? Threading tools? No, taps and dies. Tap, taps and dies. Yeah. So we take that off, and what we do is we line that up, and then it's one, two, three, Four, and then back half, you're going to have to move. One, two, three, four, and then back half. One, two, but this tool means that we get it bang on, centered. So we could do this by hand, but when you've got a lathe, it makes sense to do it this way. So that's cutting nicely, just having a little nosy in there. Clean off all that crud on the tap. I always like to apply cutting cheese. Give that a nice drenchy drenchy. And in you go. So we can catch up with where we were. And then we'll, you'll feel when it, there. You can feel it cutting one, two, three, four, and back one. One, two, three, four, five, and back one. So that is our first tap. So let's get a bit of cutting cheese on. So this one will cut closer to the bottom of the hole than the last one, but it's not cutting yet. So this is your bottoming tap and you can see the difference between that and the starting tap. So, so this one cuts closer to the bottom of the hole than this one. 
So this is our final tap. So there's usually one, two and three. Usually people just use two and three, but we've got proper sets, so we'll do it the proper way, I think. Cutting cheese. Why do you care like cutting cheese? I don't, everyone does. It's a homage to the mice that would be in the workshop in the Victorian era. You'd leave out a little bowl of oil and they'd come along and poison themselves to death. Then you'd grind them up and, and put you, them on the gears? Yeah. Mm. And their bodily fluids would produce a grease-like substance. <laughs> okay. You're so knowledgeable, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make things up either. <laughs> We've gone way further than we need. But why we've done this operation now is because when we've formed the handle, you ain't going to be able to grip it. So you wouldn't have been able to do this other than freehand or on the pillar drill, which inevitably would have led to a fuck up. It's, uh, it's a homage to the Victorian mm. era when little fuck ups would be running around the machine shop, getting their fingers caught in stuff and generally being a pain in the arse. And then you grind them up and put them on the gears, yeah? Yeah, you grind up their flesh, put them on the gears and they produce a a waxy grease-like substance that protects your machinery. Of course, that was all banned just after the Second World War. I suppose now you want to see what we've actually achieved, don't you, Mark? It might be helpful, otherwise it's just you stood over a machine for an hour. Well, yeah, well, we haven't, we haven't even fucking started yet. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <gasps> Look at the sweetness of that. So, essentially, we've just... This is M10, it's not necessarily the bolt we're going to use, but that is just nicely in there. I think what we'll do, get that in there, turn that on, and then just, just that, just touch it, and then back, and so that just means that our nut will just start a little bit, a little bit nicer. This now goes onto there. And that's our handle, except it hasn't been shaped as yet. So we might just need to adjust that bolt and put a couple of washers on it so it spins nicely. Show me then, show me, show me. So, yeah, so there we go. Look, it's not the most amazing piece of machining in all the world, but you know, at the end of the day, it's a few operations. You've got to win your machine and you've got to think about processes because now what we want to do is we want to shape this handle. And in doing that, it means that we can't grab this end. So what we're going to do now is now we've got that end pretty much ready to go. That goes into the chuck, get that kind of leveled up to stop the whip, so to essentially stop the kind of, what we're going to have to do is just put a small little spot in here, be a spot drill again. Just to get our centre in. And then you put the cone in. Put the centre in, the active centre. And that will just basically takes the whip because we're going to be working along here. So it takes the whip out and then what we'll have to do is hand finish this. Give him a clean, always wash, always wipe the shanks. He can go in there. Okay, we'll just give that a little nip and then tighten that off and bang, we're rolling.
what we use to sand it. The sandpaper in a file. And elbow grease. A sweet old portion of elbow grease. Show them the t-shirt again, Mark. Make them buy it. Why ain't you bought one yet? Actually, I mean, anything we've done other than this has been a waste of time, hasn't it? Anything we've done other than this is a waste of time. What's that in regards to our lives? Well, yeah, pretty much. No, what I mean is this method is the one that we should be using for creating handles and stuff. Right, OK. So we've very basically got the shape here now. So this is the interesting bit. So essentially, I've got so many bits of swarf in my hands. So we're going to use a rough farrier's wrap. Is it working? Yeah, it's just very slow going, mate. I mean, what we might just let's in the in light of experimentation. See if this blends anything in easier. Let's get that off. Two forty grit there. That's been a bit of a labour of love, hasn't it? Let's get some fibre on there. Just pat and match all that in. Quite sexual, this isn't it? Well, I think when we take that off there, uh, like this, watch this. Oh my god. Oh sweet Jesus. Okay. Okay, let's look at that bad boy. Oh yeah. Well, I think for our purposes, that is good. It feels great in the hand. And there we go. So, Come into like. so I mean, that's, you know, essentially right. So there you go. And I mean, it is literally just a case of just keeping going through all the tedious. You still, we can still see some scratches and some tool marks. So what I'm gonna probably do is I'm just gonna run that back through a few last couple of grits. Uh, so there what are we, we looking like? Okay, let's just, I don't know if that's as far as that's going to go at this point. Uh, there you go. So I think that works. 
hopefully it should be out of the way of the out of the way of the thing let's just take this over to the crank handle and it's going to fit good it's going to fit real good so you're doing another one then well i don't know i mean i've got to be honest with you that was a total ball ache maybe we'll just have to do it mate i think we've worked out a method of doing that now I think all that grinding and stuff is a waste of time. We want to do the machining and we've got this one to copy. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite pleased with the way that's come out. You know, um, again, like I say, I am going to bob that back in. But bloody hell, it looks like some sort of surgical tool, doesn't it? For, I don't know what. Oh, that's the thumbnail. Making a metal dong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm going a little bit too much. Maybe I'm touching it too much. People are starting to worry. Why is he holding a metal penis? What's he trying to prove to himself? I don't know. Um, so there we go anyway. That's gonna look brilliant either on the top there or on the crank handle. So one or the other, we might make a smaller one, but that's it. So next time, so we've, we've got that to still clean up. Yeah. Um, but you see, I'm going to do that off camera because it's just going to be like wire brushing for an hour or more. Yeah. Um, and then we've got all these components to spray, to get lacquered up, to get everything greased, and then to get this kind of mounted and, uh, and then have a go with it, really. So, but I do think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the right thing and just going to give that just a little bit more up through the grits. But I think that's us for today.